A while back, my friend Lucas shared this clip of a sparring session at the UFC Performance Institute in Shanghai, China, of this crazy throw reversal. Lucas is a judoka, and as you can see, he's moving into scarf hold, Kesa Gatame, to mount his follow-up attack. Now, let's break this down, what happened, why it happened, and what I learned from it. Let's slow this down. Lucas is in kind of a compromised position. He reaches around for a side headlock and attempts a Haregoshi outside reaping leg throw. His opponent bases really well, gets his weight down, drives his left knee between his opponent's stance and secures the double underhooks. Lucas attempts to secure the wizard. It's a little too late. His opponent in the black shirt gets the double underhooks, appears to initiate a mat return. Lucas breaks his opponent's posture, reaches over and completes the Haregoshi mid-air. I've seen this sort of thing before. From Mifune, one of the principal students of Jigoro Kano, the founder of Kano Jiu-Jitsu, which later became known as Kodokan Judo. Mifune was an old man, almost 80 years old, when this film reel was taken. Let's take a close look at the principles that Mifune teaches us in this old film reel. It's not magic, it's simple weight distribution. These are mechanically simple processes that you can use in other grappling styles besides Judo, or all aspects of mixed martial arts for that matter. Here's a simple lesson I learned by studying an old man. Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here at the Animal MMA Gym in Shanghai, China. And I was just showing these guys a really old video with Mifune. He was one of the top students of Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo. And he was like 70 or 80 years old at the time of filming, and he's sparring, doing randori with his black belt students, and they're trying to throw him, and he's uh, just kind of gliding right? and sort of floating around them. And so we were trying to integrate some of these principles, right? So we've been working on this sequence, right? right? Shoot, and set up double legs, or lift this up and run him over to the side to set up a double leg. Right. And these guys were asking, like, how do you stuff double legs from inside a clinch, right? If I bring them up this way and snatch this leg and drive over here, right? it's not a great position to sprawl in, right? Because I'm setting it up, it's inside of the clinch. Or if I pull them over here and I shoot down here and run right into the guard, collapsing his base, it's a, he doesn't have the opportunity to sprawl there. So what do you do when somebody is using momentum to make you move. And you might notice Tim jumped there. Right? He's kind of hopping here. Tim, pull me. Right? And that's exactly what Mifune was doing. He's gliding, he's riding the other guy. He's staying very relaxed and demonstrating these cat-like reflexes. Now, if I get heavy, right? I flex my muscles and I try to fight back. Now, Tim, pull. Okay, now, again, pull, do the takedown. Now, he's set up to grab this leg. He's set up to finish, okay? But, what if, um, what if I ride him? What if I glide? Now, pull. Now I'm set up to get him, right? So I ride, I bring both feet off the floor. I float into it, right? Again, pull. Now I can counter him pretty easily. Pull the other way. Now you can do the same thing, okay? So now I'll pull and you shoot, right? Okay, right off, right off the, right, pull, shoot, right. There we go. Again, if I pull you this way, right here, shoot, okay? Now, they weren't working with double legs, they were doing like hip throws and, you know, yogoshi movements like this, and Mifune's, still floating around that stuff, right? But they also use foot sweeps, okay? So if I do a movement like this, to put him on the floor, he can do that same thing, but this time, bring your knees high, right? So I'm trying to sweep him, oh, check that out, right? So he sees that sweep coming, and he glides right over, he puts his weight on me. Exactly what Mifune was doing, right? But not only that, do that to me. So do the sweep. So pull now. Right? And this foot. Right there. Just pull. Okay? Again, I'll go, then you go. Right. Yeah, 
tell you. Oh. That sets me up for a nice counter. Now you counter. Right. Wide over. Now shoot. You got my back now. Grab it. Take it. Put me on the floor. Whatever you want. Right? The world is yours in that position. Again. Right. Right this week. Right the momentum. Shoot. And then you got a body lock right there. That's like this. You can suplex, you can shoot under. Like every takedown is yours right there. If you learn how to ride the other guy, right? So is it easy? Ooh, you ride that man. There we go. Now, oh man, thanks for the free knee bar, but you get the idea. Now, this is not easy stuff. This is like the most advanced level of judo that Fune was showing. But is it the most advanced because it's the most difficult, the most mechanically complex? No, absolutely not. Now, I'm going to flex every muscle in my body. Tian, I want you to lift me. Okay, pretty easy. Now I'm going to relax all my muscles. Lift. And now I'm not so easy to lift anymore. All right? Which one's easier, first one or second one? Right, here's the first one, right? So, why? Because the first time, if I flex, go ahead and lift. I'm lifting myself, and I'm making it very easy for him to throw me around. The second time, now I make him do all the work, and I get a free ride. Okay, that's exactly what Mifune was doing, so here. So, I mean, it just looks like a little hop, but mechanically I'm just putting my weight on it. I'm leaning on it. We can use the same principle and say Muay Thai or clinch fighting, right? So grab, grab, right? Pummel, right? You're fighting with me a little, spar a little bit. You grab the head like we're trying to bring these knees in. Boom. Body shots, boom. Here, fight back, fight back. Yeah. Okay? Now, if I'm holding on him the whole time, I'll get very tired. But if I put my weight on him, now I get a free ride. Now, all those sweeps and takedowns and all that fun stuff becomes really easy. So the difference between flexing all the muscles, giving him a free ride, here, look up, Tim, look up. Posture, come yeah. Look, that's what you want to do. If someone pulls down on your head, look up, right? So now if I pull down, uh, I'm wasting all this energy in my arm. But what if I lean on him, I put some weight on him, I start getting a free ride and start feeling now how he wants to move. Maybe he's trying to sweep me now. Here, sweep me, do a takedown, do what you want. So now I can feel that, right? Now. Now it gets a whole lot easier to feel what his intentions are. And these same principles, whether we're using them for the stand-up game in Judo, or in Muay Thai, or, you know, the ground game in Jiu Jitsu, it's, it's those same principles. Relax, ride the other guy, use your weight as a weapon and an asset instead of a liability. And man, do some film studies on some of those old, old film reels of guys like Kano Mifune and the other founders of Kano Jiu Jitsu. You'll learn a whole lot through film study, guys. It's, um, it's really common in these modern days to think because our technology is so much more advanced than it was 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, that our knowledge is also more advanced, generally speaking, in terms of things like, say, martial arts, when often it's not. A lot of the greatest fighters I know today don't know these simple principles that Mifune showed in these, uh, these old film reels. So study them. Learn how to use your weight as an asset rather than a liability. And if you don't learn anything else uh, technical from Mifune, you can learn this. 
If you get out there and train consistently, daily, every day, your body is going to cooperate to the extent that it will do what you ask it to do up until your advanced years. So, take that as a lesson. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.